Alright, I can explain. For those of you who have been here long enough, you'll know that the first video I ever made was on Animal Crossing New Horizons. But... No one watched that video and it was a hot pile of garbage. Now, since this is the 10th episode of My Thoughts On, hooray! And since there's been a lot of changes to this game since then, I think it's time I did this video the right way. Animal Crossing New Horizons is an adorably fun, time-killing life simulator with just the tiniest little issues holding it back from its true potential. Fun fact, this is a game that was featured on a video I made with fellow YouTuber Project Gamer. He did a wonderful job putting everything together, so check that out in the link below. And after playing this game continuously for six months, I need a f***ing life, and I have some things I want to say about it. I go by Capture Reviews, and these are my thoughts on Animal Crossing New Horizons. And since there is a small storyline that will be covered, there will be some spoilers ahead. In New Horizons, your journey begins on a deserted island with everyone's favorite greedy f Tom Nook. Nook and his nephews Timmy and Tommy carefully guide you through your orientation to living the island life. They'll teach you how to fish, catch bugs, and complete as many small tasks as you can to earn Nook Miles. Nook Miles are a new reward system for doing various tasks on the island, and they can be used to purchase a variety of things. One of the main things you'll want to purchase is a ticket for a mystery island tour. These are randomly generated islands that have resources that you can farm with no penalty, so f*** up the local environment and make some money! Other than that though, there isn't much to do. The first week is really about getting you used to the world of Animal Crossing. For me personally, this first week started to become a bit tiresome around day 5 or 6. The music never changed and my two villagers seemed kind of annoyed with how frequently I spoke to them. Sorry I bothered you with my friendship, Renee! But all of that quickly changed once the resident services tent was upgraded. Out of nowhere, my small deserted island felt more alive and exploded with personality. Hourly music started playing, more villagers started moving in, and the game felt brand new all over again. And after completing the task of getting my island to a 3 star ranking, the game took off my training wheels and gave me full control of everything. This meant that I was able to terraform and I was finally able to move my villagers homes because I'm a f***ing dictator and this is my land. From there, the game is yours. Tom Nook doesn't give you any more objectives, and it's all about making your island exactly the way you want it to be. One way to make it your own is through house customization. There are plenty of wallpapers, floorings, and furniture items to choose from, and for way too many bells, you can make yourself a man cave. New Horizons gives you plenty more things to do, and there are some that need to be brought up. One of the features that this game has to offer is crafting. Yes, crafting is a new feature of New Horizons that is a fantastic addition, but just barely misses the mark on one crucial detail. While you do seemingly have an endless number of items you can craft, you'll be crafting those items one at a time. So even if you have enough clams to make 10 fish bait, you have to craft each one separately and my A button is fucked now because of this. Hopefully Nintendo patches this later, but for now I've been losing my shit crafting this slowly. Now if you aren't actually creative like me, Perhaps you can try your hand at catching critters. Catching bugs and fish is an absolute staple of the Animal Crossing series, and that hasn't gone away here. Bugs and fish are bountiful in this game, and new critters come in every month, making your quest to fill up the museum feel fresh and fun every 30 days. Speaking of which, the museum in this game got a massive makeover. Every exhibit is so detailed and different from the others, and the entire experience is so immersive. My personal favorite is the first bug room. Every tree has a different insect on it, and the dragonfly bridge has fish underneath it, which is a great touch. It really makes the museum feel connected like it should be, and oh my god, there's a f***ing beetle fight! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, welcome one and all to the Beetle Fight Club. Who's going to be our champion today? Will it be the top or the bottom beetle? Place your bets starting at $5. I've got top beetle at plus 700 and bottom beetle at minus 300. Let's see your money. Let's win. Let's fight. Oh my god, quarantine is driving me insane. <laughs> You may also run into some of your villagers in these exhibits, which is always a treat. These encounters are very much appreciated and usually yield some pretty adorable results. Along with this, Jolly Old Red is here to sell you artwork that has its own massive exhibit as well. If he ever shows up again. If he... If he ever... If he ever... Show, show it up again. Speaking of red, there is a wonderful cast of merchants and deranged bug and fish freaks that will visit your island. While it is somewhat random, you'll be receiving visits on a fairly rigid schedule from Red, Gulliver, CJ, Kix, and plenty more. These weekly visitors are always worth checking out for numerous reasons. Kix sells you shoes and bags, and CJ and Flick will buy your extra fish and bugs for a lot of bells because they're a little f***ed up, but we don't talk about that. And now, thanks to the recent updates, there is a giant ocean for you to swim in 
and explore around in. Swimming is a returning feature from New Leaf that allows you to don a wetsuit and dive underwater for sea creatures that blathers will take. Swimming is so relaxing and cute, and look, you can flip into the water! Take my fucking money, Nintendo! You sons of bitches. He did it again. And in the wonderful month of August, there are weekly fireworks every Sunday night where you can get creative and design your own to display. And hey, look at that custom firework. If I knew any better, I'd think it says sub to CR. Whoever that piece of shit is. This is such a wonderful addition. Seeing Red's raffle and your villagers all decked out for the shows is just delightful. Weekly events like this and the KK concerts are always a joy and really entice you to keep coming back. By the way, villagers in this game are so well made. Each one is so unique and has such an expressive personality. Their houses all match their style, their clothes really complement them, and they really feel alive in this game. But there is one issue I have with them, and that's their dialogue. In previous Animal Crossing games, like New Leaf, villagers would be more engaging and would often ask you to help them with errands like catching a fish or giving them fruit. But that doesn't seem to happen here though. In fact, I can only think of a few times where a villager has asked me to run an errand for them. Now that's not an issue to some and that's perfectly fine. But the issue for me goes a little bit deeper than that. Villagers usually start each day with a quick one-liner to greet you, and then we'll end the conversation right there. From that point, you have to speak to them two or three more times to hear the same old story about you burying bells or getting stung by wasps, and then you finally get some more personal sounding dialogue. Spike, I dug up like one fossil, would you please let it go for f sake. It's almost like you have to warm your villagers up before they really want to chat and interact with you. And then when they are warmed up for the day, they have some memorable things to say. But unfortunately, I find myself not getting there because mashing the A button to get my three or four conversations out of the way just isn't appealing to me. But that's not to say these guys are lacking character though. No, far from it. Each villager has such a vibrant personality, and some of them have some incredibly funny lines to say. Like Bo relates any topic to food that he can, and Piper won't let you forget that she was born to be a pop star. Villagers can also interact with the furniture you've placed outside, which is a really nice touch. Hearing my villagers sing KK Bubblegum and playing the tambourine honestly never gets old. Or watching a group of them Naruto run across town square is really entertaining. These kinds of things really help immerse you into this world and brings the villagers to life, which is something I really appreciate. There have also been numerous free updates since this game was released, and they're really something to check out if you haven't played in a while. And that is a brief summary of the gameplay of New Horizons. Other than the storyline at the beginning, this game really doesn't have much of a structure to it. It's all about having fun and making your life the way you want it to be, which I absolutely adore. There are some quality of life issues like crafting and the villagers dialogue, but hopefully we get an update to those soon, and even still, those issues aren't terrible, but it would be better if they were fixed. The game did just include cloud save backups in the most recent update, which proves Nintendo is listening to the fans, and hopefully that continues moving forward. Oh, and I didn't even mention that all of this and more can be done with online and local multiplayer. I usually like to keep these reviews single player oriented, but just know multiplayer is here and it works like a dream. Visually, New Horizons defines the term eye candy. Everything in this game uses a massive color palette, so sunsets and sunrises look jaw-droppingly beautiful and the villagers really look alive. The game uses bright and soft colors across the board, which makes it so inviting and is amazing to see. With this, however, moments like thunderstorms and rainy days really transport you to a gloomy, dull-looking day, which is actually a great thing. Not every day will be bright and peppy, which adds even more realism to this life simulator. The music coincides with the visuals too using, <laughs> you guessed it, adaptive sound. This means that when it rains, the music changes slightly to match the mood. Or when it snows, which we have yet to officially hear in the Northern Hemisphere, jingle bells make their way in slowly, adding to the wintry feel, which is, oh my god! There's also the massive library of KK songs that are all wonderful. Each song is strikingly different from the last, and can actually help tie your rooms together in my opinion. The hourly music is as great as ever, and the themes for events like fireworks are absolutely wonderful. The incredible music and visuals really help make New Horizons the ultimate life simulator. So, 
Is New Horizons worth buying? Absolutely yes. Especially with how crazy this world has been lately, this game is the perfect escape for anyone who wants a fun and relaxing experience. Animal Crossing New Horizons looks and sounds amazing and has so much to offer and there's even more coming in the future. There are some issues here and there that make this game underperform just a little, so while it isn't perfect, it still deserves a very respectable 9 out of 10. If Nintendo can fix the issues I mentioned earlier, I'll give it a 10, but for now, it just misses the mark. If six months of continuous play wasn't a big enough hint, I love this game, and I think everyone should give it a go because it's an absolute blast. Thank you so much for watching and listening to my thoughts on Animal Crossing New Horizons. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.